Hello, boys and girls. Today, we're going to be discussing Alexander Hamilton's financial plan to reduce the national debt and build our economy. Now that Washington is president, he has appointed a cabinet. And within this cabinet, he has the Secretary of State, which is Thomas Jefferson. He's going to be dealing with foreign affairs. Then we have Alexander Hamilton, and his job is to be Secretary of Treasury. And the biggest thing he has to deal with is reducing the national debt that we've incurred because of the American Revolution. So because of this revolution, we have a large debt to pay. The problem is, it's not just us, the national government. Every single state has their own debts as well. Under the Articles of Confederation, it was a loose confederation of states. So each state borrowed money on their own and then the national government also. So uh, Hamilton has to come up with a plan to reduce our national debt and to build our economy. And his plan actually has four parts. So what I want us to do is go ahead and press pause on this video and draw this out on your notes. Make sure that you've already, you already know where exactly these notes are going to be taken. Uh, if you don't know, go back to your teacher and look for those instructions and so that you know that you have completed it in the right spot. Go ahead and press pause and then press play when you're ready to go. All righty. So Alexander Hamilton's financial plan. Part one is assuming state's debts. Hamilton believed that the national government should pay off the debts to both the states and the previous national government in order to establish the nation's credit. So the very first part, part one of his plan is to assume state debts. And that's what we're gonna do right here. We're gonna write out number one, and we're gonna put assume state debts. That's the first thing we want to do. Now, why do we want to assume state debts? Nobody is going to recognize us as a respectable nation if, if we can't pay off our debts and if we cannot establish a credit line, a line of credit. So, number one, we're going to write these notes. And if you cannot keep up, guys, if I'm going too fast, the best part about this is you can always press pause, complete the notes, and then be able to catch up. So, number one, assume state's debts. We want to pay off the debts of both the states and the previous national government. And what is our previous national government? The Articles of Confederation. And why do we want to do this? to establish the nation's credit. All right, here we go. So let's move on to part two of the plan. And part two includes creating or establishing a national bank. This is gonna help us establish a stable economic system. Hamilton proposed the creation of a national bank as a place to deposit money, to provide sound currency, and to be able to make loans to the national government. Remember that under the Articles of Confederation, every state had their own type of money. We don't want that. We wanna be able to have the same common currency so we're gonna establish a bank to be able to start creating common currency and so that people can deposit money or their taxes. And finally, so that the national government could actually borrow against this. So part number two is establishing a national bank. So we're just gonna put two and we're gonna put national bank. And here I'm gonna draw my little bank right here with the pillars just like that. So here's my bank and I'm gonna put a money sign on it. 
And every time we think of Hamilton, that's the first thing that should come to our, our mind, money, because that's what he had to deal with. That was his main job. He's actually on the $10 bill. So here we're going to put, on number two, we're going to put the National Bank. Okay, we're going to put deposit taxes. We're going to do bullet points. Deposit. So deposit taxes. We're also going to create a sound currency. So that means the same common currency. And as well as make loans to the national government. This is part two. Now let's take a look at part three. The next part uh, discusses the whiskey tax. Hamilton believed that we needed to create a stable economic system by bringing in revenue, bringing in money. So in order to start bringing in, collecting some money for the national government, they imposed a tax on whiskey. Now the whiskey tax is an internal tax on whiskey to raise money. Now who's being affected? Western farmers, boys and girls, because whiskey is made out of corn. And Western farmers would grow the corn and a lot of the times, instead of having to transport that corn to the East Coast where they're selling it, they would make it into whiskey because that was easier to transport. So when they imposed a tax on whiskey, who were the main people affected? The Western farmers. And so, of course, why was this uh, tax imposed? In order to reduce the national debt that we got because of fighting the American Revolution. Now, what happens because of this? The farmers in western Pennsylvania rebelled against this tax and threatened tax collectors. This was known as the Whiskey Rebellion. Now, the great part about our new government is that we were actually able to define our authority as a national government because Washington now had the power to go over there and enforce the law. And he went over there with an army. And of course, that stopped the rebellion. So this is part two, three, I'm sorry, the whiskey tax. So we're going to move this over. And we're going to put a number three and we're going to write whiskey tax. Now with this whiskey tax, we're going to put tax imposed on whiskey to raise. And I'm going to use this word right now, revenue. That's money, boys and girls. This causes the whiskey rebellion in which Washington enforces the law, all right? Because that's his job. As commander-in-chief, his job is to enforce the laws. And what is our final, final part of Hamilton's financial plan? The last thing he wanted, which was, it was a want, it didn't happen, was to impose a tariff, a protective tariff. Now, what is a protective tariff? A protective tariff is a tax, that's a tariff, a tax on imported goods. That means foreign goods. Now, at this time, the North has industries, some factories, and the South has an agrarian, uh, agrarian economy. That means the South grows crops and the North manufactures goods. Well, the South is buying a lot of their manufactured goods from Europe because they're actually cheaper than the ones from the North. But Hamilton doesn't want American money leaving to another country. He wants the money to circulate within North America to build our economy. So what Hamilton proposes is a tax that when anyone buys manufactured goods or foreign goods from Europe, they need to pay an additional tax. That tax will go to the national government in the United States. So they can either choose to pay the tax or choose to buy the goods from the North in which the money will stay within the United States. Now, this was something he proposed. It didn't go through, but it 
it, it is something that later on when Jackson becomes president, he actually enforces and passes this law. So a protective tariff. So we're going to put here for part number four, we're going to put protective tariff. And the way we're going to remember a protective tariff is that it is a tax, a tax on imported goods. to protect American industries. They're protecting American industries. Now, the problem with this protective tariff is that it hurts the South because the South, either way, is going to be losing money because of it. They're either going to be paying more money for the tax or they're going to be spending more money on the manufactured goods with buy, that they're buying within the United States. So it hurts the South and it helps the North. These are the four parts of Hamilton's financial plan, boys and girls. Make sure that you're able to complete these. And that uh, that you have it in the appropriate spot. All right, boys and girls, thank you so much for watching and we'll see you next time.